Of all the ingredients that I get to cook with, none are more inspiring than those that come from my home, Prince Edward Island. But I've always wondered, what would the flavors be like all the way around the other side of the world? Which is exactly why I've come here, as far away from home as I can possibly get on the planet, to Tasmania. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It's really good. When I was a kid, I thought if I dug a deep enough hole, I'd end up eating Chinese food for lunch. It actually turns out, though, that I'd end up here, in Tasmania. This is what the other side of the world looks like. The island of Tasmania is a state of Australia. It's famous for its oysters and lobster and farming. It's really not all that different from my home, Prince Edward Island. The weather's the same, the seasons are backwards, but the weather's the same, and fishing is clearly a big deal here, too. So naturally, I'm wondering, how is the seafood on the other side of the world? For starters, there are fish in these waters I've never seen before. And apparently, the local lobster is just a little bit different from what I'm used to. So I'm here on the Hobart waterfront, where I'm told that Muir's serves up the very best, fresh, local seafood. Hi. Hi. How can I help you? Uh, fish and chips. Um, do you have any chowder of any kind? Yep. Yeah, any chef worth their salt can sear foie gras or pile garnishes high on a plate. But show me a chef who can make a great local chowder or a perfect plate of fish and chips. This is the sort of thing that impresses me. Hey, perfect. Thank you. Not quite as exotic as some of the food I order on the road, but sometimes out here, all you want is something simple that reminds you of home. Not 100% sure what the fish is, but it's, it's really good fried with a batter. And this chowder is really good. There's something smoked in here, and it's got a deep, rich fish broth flavor to it. Now, there's one thing we always do at home when we're eating fish and chips on the waterfront. We always share with the locals. I think I need to talk to the chef about the chowder. You're on. Yes, chef Gary Shepard's kitchen looks pretty familiar, but the fish he's serving? Well, let's just say I've got a few things to learn down here. What kind of fish was in the, the fish and chips? I didn't... Uh, that'd be our blue eye trevella. Blue eye tre trevella? Trevella, yeah. Very popular in Tassie. We have our two boats, the Kyella and the Diana, and we actually go out and target that species of fish, the blue eye. That, so, as a chef, that must be great. Absolutely. Catch it, process it, you know, do everything with it. So should take you out, out to the factory where we actually um, do some of the smoking and fill up the fish and, and show you around out there. A little new. <laughs> Hey, Chef Michael. Michael. Good nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is that the fish there? That's, That's right. That's it, eh? Yeah. And you can totally see why it's called the blue eye. Yeah. Yep. They eat almost anything. They eat a lot of seaweed, they eat squid, uh, mollusks on the ocean floor. So but that's why he's got the sharp teeth. Yeah, these come from about 500 metres down. What are these other fish I see? You've got quite yeah, a we've got variety here. Look at this guy. That's what they call a latchet, uh, a morwong. A strange name. Big flathead that Gary's got there. That kind of reminds me of a uh, monkfish. Boarfish? Yep. Boarfish? Very distinctive looking fish. Yeah, it is. I've never seen one of those before. Maybe we could cook up all of these. Do a cook up or something. Yeah, Try them all out. The Travala was perfect battered in my fish and chips, but it's also excellent for smoking. Like smokehouses all over the world, Muir's uses local wood to perfume and preserve its fish traditionally. Local Tasmanian oak, a very aromatic hardwood. Oh, yeah, look at that. What's on this one? What are the herbs on there? That's got lemon pepper, dill, and parsley. And these are, uh, that's just a cracked pepper. pepper. And this is a Cajun spice. Oh, so this one's got a little heat to it. That one, yeah
could pull a stool and a fork up right here and just go to town. Yeah, let's have it right. I'm going to start with the pepper. Mm. Oh, that's good eating. That is really nice. I'm thinking this is kind of the local equivalent of what we know as smoked mackerel. But that's lunch for me right there. I'd eat a whole filet of that right there. Uh, a lot of this is also in that smoky seafood chowder that you try. This is what gave this it the smoky color. flavor. Yeah, the that's a nice touch, that yeah. smoke in the chowder. That's a, that's yeah. a cool touch. But you know what? You sh we should take you out mm. on the boats, see what, how it really happens. Get out on the water. Yep, we can uh, do a lobster trip, maybe, catch some crayfish and uh, abalone, diving for abalone. Abalone? Absolutely. Sure. That's what we're looking for. Now we're talking. This is Tasmania. In the 1800s, it was famous as a notorious British penal colony, but today, it's world-renowned for its strong local food culture. Back home on Prince Edward Island, the lobsters are world-class, but Tasmanian fishing legend Will Muir thinks he can top that. Hey, Lee. Good day, Will. How you going, hey, mate? Good, mate. This is uh, Michael Smith. Michael hey, Smith. Lee. Michael How's Smith. How are you? How's it going, Lee? Good, mate. Good. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Going Fishing for a start. cruise today. Yeah, we are. We're going to catch some of the best lobster in the world. <laughs> you figure, huh? Yeah. All right, all right, we'll see about that. We will see about that. <laughs> we'll have a look at them. Sometimes the more things change, the more they stay the same. I mean, Tasmania is as far from my home on Prince Edward Island as I can possibly get on the planet. But somehow, I still feel right at home here. I speak the language, the weather seems the same, and I'm surrounded by fishermen. But I'm still more than 20,000 kilometers off of my beaten path. The lobster fishery here, is it a healthy fishery? Is it in very, good shape? Very healthy, I reckon. I reckon it's just, yeah, it's good. Southern rock lobster. Best lobster in the world. We'll yeah. see about that. <laughs> but we haven't proven that yet. You know, I think my lobster's pretty good at home. We'll see. That's great. You ever get out there and have a rough day? Oh, we come down a way once around Southwest Cape that was 18 metres deep. 18 meter swells, eh? <laughs> that was, yeah. In this boat? No, no, this was in my other boat, which was smaller. Three waves break here, and the water comes through the top of the door and went down my leg into my gum boot. And I was just standing here. What's it like with. Antarctica to the south. There's no land mass. That, the wind is just whipping completely around the globe, and you're going right out in the middle of some of the most dangerous water in the world. What's that like? I've never thought about it before like that. <laughs> I've never thought about it like that, actually. Uh, well, we just cope. Like, yeah, you cope as you, as you cope in your job with different things, I suppose. We cope with the summer ocean. <laughs> Probably trying to, to get us one day, but... 18 meter waves? No thanks. Fortunately, lease traps are set just offshore, so we don't have to steam too far south. Our plan is to pull a few and then stage a taste test. We usually make them out of wire mess. So what, yep. what's all this wood? What would this, this be? This timber here, this is called tea tree. Nowadays, everyone's sort of going to more heavier steel pots. It looks like a really efficient design. Of course, yeah. there's no fish in there. No. Where's the lobster? <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some out of the next one. All right, back to work. We don't call lobsters either, do you? No, crayfish. we, we got to get the crayfish. lingo right. That's what we're looking for. Now we're talking. Big fish. He doesn't want to come out. He knows I'm a chef. <laughs> Look at that. But that is a big lobster. I'm used to seeing these two giant claws off the front, and I'm guessing that this, these two here, these front two, those would be the claws. The carapace at home is very smooth. Right. Here, there's very real rough. intricate, rough pattern it's on here. It's all spiky. Yeah. yeah, it's quite spiky. Generally. What do you say? You got a chef on board. You want to well, uh, taste one up? Cook a bit, eh? <laughs> yeah, feel hungry? I'm not going to miss one, are we? There's one thing I got to do. I got to get a picture of this. I got to show my buddies at home. The boat is geared up to grill offshore, simply with just olive oil and a squeeze of lemon. Nothing to get in the way of the flavor of my first southern rock lobster. And my favorite way to eat lobster is just like this, out on the boat. 
You know it's fresh for sure. Absolutely. Take a look at this, Lee. This is what our boats actually look like. Got a right. real high front prow. Yeah, we call that a Cape Islander. Like our guys are sort of smashing through the waves to get Big to their light. traps, bigger yeah. waves. See, so there's what the traps actually look yeah, like. Right. And then let's see, here's here's a, here's a picture of the tastiest lobster in the world right there. It look looks at like that. a plastic one. <laughs> <laughs> that one's been cooked. That's oh. what it is. That guy's been cooked. Oh, yeah, now, oh, there's oh, some flavor. Oh, Just put a little lemon on there. How would we say it? I reckon they're ready. I reckon uh, they're ready. No worries. I reckon they're ready. Okay. Come on in. Let's get some lobster <laughs> here. That one's a good firm meat, too. Should be able to just pull that right out of there. I came a long way for this, Captain. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Don't even joke about that. No flavor at all. <laughs> Man, I really feel bad for you having to work so hard to get this. I'm kidding. It's, it's identical, really. Right. It's just like our yeah. lobster. Coming out of the cold water. Yeah. Cold water fish always seems to be better. Yeah. This is firm yeah. and sweet. It's just as good as our lobster at home, really. Just I'm just good. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> this crayfish, though, you know we're going to have uh, abalone later on. Take you out on an ab, ab boat, catch a nice abalone. Abalone. Now, there's something I don't know a thing about. I don't think I've ever even seen one. I'm 20,000 kilometers away from home in Tasmania, where I've come to try the fish on the other side of the planet. I've tasted some of the local lobster, the famous southern rock lobster, and I have to admit, it does look different, it doesn't have any claws, but it tastes just like the lobster from home. It's early morning, and now I'm going fishing for something I've never even seen before, abalone. How's it going? How's it going? Welcome aboard Dan Maropa. Thank you. I hear you're the, uh, the abalone guy around here. Oh, well, we do our best, you know. Abalone has long held with great respect in China, where they call it the Dish of Kings. I've never eaten it. I've never seen it in the water. I'm, I really don't know anything about this stuff. Abalone's a, a mollusk. So a single shell, and it's got a uh, meat foot, and it grazes across hard, rocky reef bottom. Tasmania's got 25% of the world's wild stock, so this is the home of them. So I'm just going to take you down the river here to one of my little secret spots. We're heading out into the southern ocean here. Th these are some of the most dangerous waters in the world. Is commercial diving in these waters? Abalone diving can be dangerous. You can't trap them, you can't hook them, you can't line them, you can't bait them. You've got to get on the bottom and catch them with your own hands. You're making it sound simple, but it's still diving. We're professionals. Don't try this at home. I'm not going to try it here, either. <laughs> I'm going to stand right here and watch. OK. I mean, I've been scared by killer whales, uh, giant stingrays, um, sharks. So, uh, yeah, that was a heart stopper. Roger is an abalone diver. His father was an abalone diver, and his brother is an abalone diver. Together, they harvest more than 50,000 kilograms of abalone every year. Back on shore, that catch is worth more than four million bucks. Tasmania is the world's largest supplier of wild abalone. The fish is renowned for its succulent, meaty texture and delicate flavor. The abalone shell isn't just beautiful, it's also exceptionally strong. And I can't wait to taste what's inside. Here he comes. Hey, hey! Abalone! So that's what they look like. It's like the abalone. Black lip abalone. $20 each. That's what $20 looks like right there. $20 beach price. By the time that gets to China, it'll be more like $100. I've got to taste this. There's got to be a reason why that's worth 100 bucks in China right there. See how you run your finger there? You feel it just sort of sucking? 
Yeah, he's coming onto my finger for sure. That's a nice live abalone. He's got a beautiful sheen to his black lip there. See the colour? Uh-huh. You know, it's nice and fresh looking. That that whole foot there is all food, it's all muscle. It's only a little bit of gut. You can feel the strength of it. It's just rippling with strength. The Tasmanian abalone fishery is the first fishery in the world that's had quotas imposed upon it and restrictions, and then subsequently, because of stock renewal, had those quotas lifted. It's a big thing for the investors in the fishery and the managers and the, and the state's economy. And, more importantly, we're bringing home a delicacy that you can't find anywhere else in the world. This is the sort of place that I really enjoy being back at home. Out at sea, out on the water, gone fishing. Of course, down here, the fish are all different, so it's been even better, really. The lobster that's actually a crayfish and, and these abalone that I haven't even tasted yet. I'm really looking forward to getting back on shore, finding Chef Gary. We've got some local oysters to find, and then we're heading for a beach for a cook-up. This is what the other side of the world looks like, Tasmania, an enchanting island with a treasure trove of local ingredients for any chef that loves seafood. Southern lobster, abalone, fish I've never seen before, and fish I haven't tasted yet, but that's about to change. Another boat ride, eh? One more boat ride and one last ingredient. No beach party anywhere in the world is complete without local oysters. You got a shocker? Shaka? Yeah, I'm a pretty good shaka. Yeah? Yeah. I think we'd better jump in the water and grab some and um, take him back to the beach and have a cook-up, eh? Sounds like a plan to me. I didn't come all this way to sit on the boat and watch. Nah. Look at the shape of that. That is a beautiful oyster. Nice, deep cup, flat top. Yeah, we've taken a long time, but we think we've got it right. Yeah, I think you do, too. I can't <laughs> wait to try that. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be good. That's a beautiful oyster, truly. Thanks, mate. You bet. We got it all. We got oysters, we got crayfish, we got abalone, and about five types of fish. I don't even know what they are. <laughs> this is a real treat doing this, you know? This is really this is really cool to be able to try all these different fish, to try them here in Tasmania, you know, local fish, all that sort of thing. This guy we're going to cut into steaks. I think cutlets, yeah. We've got some salt, don't we? Yeah, yeah, salt. OK, this one's going to sit for a few minutes, suck up some of that flavor, and then it's going to get smoked. How about, how about we do the blue eye, blue eye traveller as a fillet? That's probably going to be the most popular fish, I would imagine. This is the one I had in the fish and chips. That's it. What I'm really looking forward to today is that abalone. Ah, the abalone. Well, I haven't tried okay. the abalone yet. I still can't believe how strong this muscle is. Kind of like I'm in the middle of an arm wrestling fight, you know? <laughs> oh, you're a natural. You've done this before. Well, I haven't, actually. <laughs> oh, there it is. There he is. Now you got him. Yeah, oh, look right. at that. And that's, yeah, that's, that's really hard. That's even yeah. harder than the... How in the world are you going to get that tender? Mm. I and mean, that's hard as wood. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Basically. Okay. But Gary's done this before. A few thin slices. And a few hammer hits later, and we've got tender. And that just loosens right up. Now that, that is sashimi grade, of course. You can eat that as is. Down the edge. There's a really interesting texture to it as well. It's almost a... Would you say, a, like, not quite calamari, but not quite? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's unusual, isn't it? It's, it's is. a, a, a flavor all of its own. Now but... let me try one before you tenderize ah, before. it. Let yeah. me see how tough it would be oh, this way. Crunchy tough. <laughs> I can bite through it, but it's crunchy. Mm. It's a completely different, different texture taste. with just one hit. That's fascinating. Yeah. Right? Oh, 
nose boarfish. Funny nose boarfish. <laughs> Put some salt and pepper on the worms. <laughs> got an idea for your oysters. I, I brought something all the way around the world from home that I would serve with oysters at home. Woody Island oysters, lemon, cracked yeah. pepper, caviar, chives, and, see, I'm thinking, all right, what flavor am I going to bring all the way down here and share with all you folks? What would make the most sense to bring from home that you don't have down here? You got all this great seafood. What don't you have? Potato uh, vodka. Uh, Potato yeah. vodka. What do you say? Beautiful. We, we call this an oyster shooter at home. Yeah. Bottoms up. All of this, boys. You know what we say at home? Suck, slurp, and swallow. Mm. Mm. What do you think? Mm. Spot on. All right, wow. we got some fish to cook, don't we? Even though Prince Edward Island and Tasmania are on opposite sides of the earth, it really feels like we're neighbors. We have so much in common. Or fish, uh, blue eye. Yeah, blue eye but really what it comes down to, I think, is it doesn't matter where you're cooking. If you're using the local stuff, mm. it always great seems product. to work. Great product, great people. Yeah, it's always going to work. Somehow it's yeah. exactly the same here as it was where I came. <laughs> yep, Excellent. I get that. Thank you're you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. And give that potato vodka a good home. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>